if you find that your cells are too wide, I mean, Excel does make the cells awfully wide, sort of like this or something. Uh, if you want to make them narrower, because we're mostly working with integers here, almost, almost all the time, except for with some exceptions, you can narrow these down uh, by simply uh, clicking on the upper left corner cell. It's not really a cell, but it automatically selects the whole spreadsheet and <coughs> move the mouse over to a borderline on one of the headers narrow the header width and you can see that um, you just narrow it to something that you like and notice that everything just snaps back uh, to the same width okay so now um, I'm gonna show you some things about number patterns uh, in Excel and if I enter numbers like 3 and, I wasn't intending to do 4, but 3 and 6, um, and then I highlight, Excel will see that as a number pattern that you're counting in 3's, and it will try to discern uh, some kind of pattern. Now if you do something like, if you do something like this, I'm I'm not at all sure if it will discern a number pattern, although we could see if it does. And it does. It looks like it seems to be adding four. In other words, the difference between three and seven every time I update the cell is I'm going to do some mathematical operations on columns A and B. First of all, um, let's add columns A and B. Now whenever you do that, <coughs> you have to do things like enter a formula. So the addition of numbers that exist in cells, such as here and here, and if I want to highlight that whole column, I can do this. And to put the results here, require a formula. So I will enter equals A1, and notice that A1, which is the value 3, highlights okay, with a little blue box. And I want to add, add that to B1 and it has a little green box around its 3 and 3 plus 3 is 6 so so far so good now um, what um, <coughs> Microsoft Excel will do with uh, such things if I have a formula it will see that okay A1 and B1 are taken to be what are called relative cell references that means that if I copy this formula um, say using control C, control V, which is the Microsoft cut and paste, notice it adds 6 plus 7 to make 13. And is that the right, and is that the formula that it's using? Well, A2 plus B2. Hmm, okay. And if I now do control C to copy, and, and by the way, notice the rather amusing, um, uh, rotating dashes around the box. Uh, they're known as marching ants, by the way. Um, anyway, 9 and 11 make 20, and that's A3 plus B3 goes in cell C3. By the way, if you want to get rid of the marching ants, um, you don't need to call the exterminator. Just hit the escape key, and that'll get rid of them. And just to make sure that we got the formula, notice A3 plus B3 is in fact the underlying formula, and the result is the result that's visible when you hit the enter button. Well, you can, for that matter, you don't need to do cut and paste every single time. You can also take um, this, um, this little square on the bottom right corner, and click on the plus sign and drag the, that little square down for 14 for all 14 uh, cells and these are all the consecutive additions of numbers on the corresponding row so uh, a12 plus b12 gives us the result in c12 so when we add 36 and 47 we get 83 okay so that's fine uh, what about multiplication? Multiplication is something like A3, A3, A1 times B1. And if I do that, I get 3 times 3, which is 9. And I can now take that, just like I did for column C, drag that all the way down with my mouse, and let go. And some of the numbers 
uh, end up being these kind of funny characters because the the numbers are too big to display in a column that is so narrow so what we do is we widen the column a little bit and there we go <coughs> we now have um, the ability to show four digits in a column and um, all right so now that's multiplication and notice that in fact if I double click on any of the cells the underlying formula is what we would expect a 10 times b 10 goes into C into d 10 and that's 30 times 39 making 1170 e uh, okay let's let's do something with column e how about division so if I do say a 1 divided by ooh, by the way if I do a1 divided by b1 and notice I do not have an equal sign in front if I hit enter nothing happens I just get the literal thing that I typed so if I even said something like hello mom mom that's not a nice way to spell mom hello mom will actually be literally hello mom it will be literally the text that you type so if you do something like that if you do say you know a3 divided by b3 uh, you'll get nothing you need an equal sign in front to start your formula so a1 divided by b1 okay uh, with an equal sign in front will give you a calculation and notice you know you've done the right thing when um, the cell references you typed in are in color and those colors match these over here and I hit enter 3 divided by 3 GG I wonder uh, what that's gonna be it's 1 and I can copy that formula down and I get a lot of different numbers and if I expand this notice these really are different how about exponents so and I'll just expand this just a little bit because exponents tend to be a little bit um, <coughs> tend to generate rather large numbers so if I take a1 and I square it I can do this a1 times a1 I can certainly do that and square it but what if I wanted um, a better way to do it like for example I wanted to do it in a way that the same formula could be used or a similar formula could be used for cubes or raising a number to the power 4 or to the power 5 or something like that so squared is like it's like this I'll do that again shift 6 on the keyboard okay shift 6 and that gives you this this little carrot symbol a hat symbol and I'm gonna enter a 2 and 3 squared is 9 now I, I'm only uh, doing this operation on the numbers of column A so only a1 got the operation and if I now do this all the way down I can get some fairly big numbers going into the thousands and um, so that's 6 squared 9 oops I don't know why I keep doing that 9 squared um, 15 squared and so on we can just keep going um, all the way down to 42 squared okay <clears throat> that's those are squares of course cubes you would simply just do the same thing again and replace it with the number 3 instead of a 2 you just put a 3 after the caret and hit enter and 3 cubed is 27 now notice what happens uh, I'm going to replace all of those squares with cubes. Now watch what, watch how I can do this. It's as simple as taking that lower left little square and dragging it down, and it clobbers all the values and replaces them with the cubes. So down on the bottom we get 42 cubed. That's 74,088. And anyway, so that's cubes. How about square roots? Now square roots may not work out to round numbers. So let's say that I took the square root of the numbers in column F. And they may not work out nicely. So uh, the way to do that, there's two ways of doing it. You can do equal sign F1 to the power of, in brackets, 1 over 2. 
that will give you the number raised to the power one half which is indeed a square root you can also go with a visual basic function built in to uh, the Excel spreadsheet and that's equal sign SQRT and then enter the cell reference F1 and you get the same number so this the only advantage the only disadvantage of um, of SQRT is that there is no there is no corresponding cube root function or fourth root function or anything like that some perfect cubes some cubes are perfect squares in the case of uh, 9 cubed it's also uh, you can also take the square root uh, also uh, 36 cubed so it looks like wherever we ran into a situation where there was a uh, a perfect square in column A um, we got um, a, a, a whole number square root in column G uh, where that was not the case it looked like column G ends up being some and I'm gonna start doing some dice rolls so um, first of all they they uh, go by this random uh, number generator which is just the function RAND and all this RAND does is return a number okay and well it returns a different number every time it's run in fact I can actually do a whole bunch of these and it's a whole bunch of different random numbers in fact I can widen this column and show you that these numbers go on at considerable length um, so notice by making the columns narrow we hide a lot of details here at any rate so if I drag that box over sideways I got a whole bunch of random numbers but these random numbers aren't very useful what we really want to do is use these random numbers for a purpose because that's what you know if you want to simulate a game of chance or something like that you might be interested in this well we have to have a way of truncating or cutting off the decimal that we randomly generate using the random number now let's say we're doing a dice roll so I need to I need six random numbers now rand produces numbers from 0 to 0.99999 it doesn't quite go to 1 so if I do trunk rand I might get a 0 or I might get a 1 but in fact I th I'm afraid I may always get a 0 and that's because this random generator never goes to one it never quite goes to one so if I keep chopping off the decimal all I get is the integer in front of it well that's not very helpful so let's modify this maybe inside the bracket I want to multiply it by six and that's like six sides of a die so if I get say one sixth times six I get one if I get you know 5 over 6 times 6 I get a 5 so oh, I just rolled a 1 let's see if anything happens oh look how strange I just rolled a 0 well that isn't supposed to happen and do I ever roll a 6 let's try it for a whole bunch of rolls let's just go over here I don't seem looking at this it don't seem to ever get a 6 but I get a lot of zeros here well that's not quite what I wanted now I'm getting numbers in other words from 0 to 5 I want numbers from 1 to 6 so to increase my range after that whole function is typed out I just add 1 and that moves it shifts the range of the function one more into the positive direction so now instead of getting the numbers from 0 to 5 I will now get the numbers from 1 to 6 and there I rolled a 3 let's see if a 0 ever occurs again and let's go to 10 we don't get zeros but we certainly get a 6 and going this way lots of sixes no zeros I think we did it I think this is our dice roll and that's an example of a dice roll simulation done uh, using a random number generator but of course you can do lots of things with it you don't need to just simulate dice rolls you can simulate a lot of random 
processes using things like this. What I want to do if I wanted to produce the numbers between say 1 and 24, well I can multiply my rand by 24 and make sure I add a 1 to ensure that I don't, don't go from 0 to 23. But what if I wanted from say 2 to 25? Oops, <laughs> sorry. What if I wanted to go from 2 to 25? Well I can just add a 2 here. And if I think about that, that's the lowest I can have is a 2. And the highest I can have, I don't quite go to, well, maybe I do go to 24. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if in a whole bunch of these dice rolls, do I ever get a 24. Now that might be chancy. Maybe I never get one, but that's not the fault of the, there, we got a 20. Yes, we got a 25. By adding 2, I've increased the entire range by 1. That means I increased both the lower end and the upper end of the range by 1. So yes, I will hit 25. There we go. And here's the, here's another 25. And uh, at any rate, uh, I'm done.